What's up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, today we're not doing a gear review, but we are going to be going over a very important topic and that is how to beat target panic. Um, I give a lot of lessons. I teach a lot of people every day shooting. Uh, there's a couple very common ways that target panic rears its ugly head. Most commonly is punching the trigger. So today we're going to go over things you can do with your equipment as well as uh, exercises um, that you can practice in order to beat target panic. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the most common one out there, which is punching the trigger uh, or commanding the shot. Now, what I tend to see, the most common thing that I see when punching the trigger is one, a, a quick jerky motion on the trigger, whether it's a thumb button or an index style, uh, and a bow that never actually truly settles on the spot. So, and in worst case scenario, you get the combination of the two, where the bow is never really stopping and they punch the trigger as the pin crosses the center of the dot. Uh, even if you're a new shooter, I would really take the time to work on your release and just aiming your bow with your finger on the trigger. Uh, if you're somebody who's been shooting for a while and struggling with target panic, I'm gonna give you a number of exercises here that you can use uh, to hopefully combat that. So target panic is a mental, I don't wanna call it a disorder, but it is a mental issue. Um, basically, changing releases, like guys will, you know, they shoot an index, they go to a thumb release, they go, oh my gosh, this cured my target panic. It's just because their body's not used to that release yet. And in a week, they figured out how to punch the, the thumb trigger and they're back to punching the trigger. And now they just have this bag full of releases. Um, they go back and forth trying to confuse their brain, but eventually you're gonna learn how to punch any release. So what we need to learn how to do is be comfortable aiming, building pressure on the trigger until that shot breaks. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you're somebody who is struggling with uh, punching the trigger and a pin, you know, like as soon as that pin covers what you're looking at, there's that little voice in your head that's just like, go, go, go. And it's almost like you can't control it. Um, what I want you to do is completely unmount your sight from your bow. Now, if you're sighted in and you think it's shooting well, it will go right back into the exact same spot. You're going to unmount the sight from your bow. You're going to hang a target like this at literally, I mean, you can do this in your garage at five feet, 10 feet. Um, and what you're going to do is center that dot in your peep sight. The reason we remove the pin from the equation is because the pin generally is the catalyst. We see that pin coming down here, we're like, oh, it's almost there, it's almost there, it's almost there, now, and we punch the trigger. So by removing that pin, we've taken away that subconscious cue to punch the trigger. Um, keep in mind when you're doing this, depending on how bad your target panic is, this isn't something you're gonna do for an afternoon and cure it, okay? I would recommend doing this for three weeks, every night, five nights a week, three nights a week, as much as you can. Um, work on just centering that dot in your peep sight. The goal is not to hit the middle. You're not gonna hit the middle. That's not the goal. The goal is to break a clean shot. So once we get that, that dot centered in our sight, you're gonna stare at the middle. You're gonna bring your finger onto the trigger or if you're shooting a thumb button, you're gonna bring your thumb onto the button. And then you need to get some sort of mental either cadence or rhythm uh, that is going to help keep that, that pressure building. What I see so many times is people come in, their finger hits the trigger, you know, they're, they're good, and then as soon as they get down to the target, their finger starts to feather it, and then it, boom, comes off, and then they hammer it. Once that finger hits the trigger, it moves nowhere but backwards. So we're not bringing it off and then punching it. It literally, it hooks, we pull into it, and we squeeze, 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 boom, and the shot breaks. Um, in order to do that, what works for me and what seems to work well with people that I coach is I will literally say, and this, again, this is whether it's a thumb button or an index, or even if you're using a hinge, I will say squeeze one, squeeze two, squeeze three, squeeze four in my head while I'm aiming. What this does is it keeps your brain focused on the task at hand, which is squeezing the release. As soon as I start looking at that pin or thinking about the target, I completely forget what I'm doing back here. Um, Joel Turner has a lot of really good stuff on this. Um, when I listened to his his uh, like seminars on this, I was like, wow, he just he just explains this in such a better way than I than I ever could um, when I was teaching it. But it was the same concept of like you have to stay focused on the task at hand. So 
The goal when you're doing this is not to get the shot to fire on one, two, three, or four. The goal is that every time I get to the next number or squeeze, I feel more pressure on that finger, more pressure on the trigger. Um, the shot should surprise you a little bit or startle you. Um, eventually, it will no longer startle you or surprise you. Your body knows it's coming. You control the whole process, but you do not control the exact moment that release fires. So again, if you're in the bad habit of punching the trigger, you're gonna need to do this exercise for as long as you feel comfortable with, okay? I would say minimum two weeks. And when I say two weeks, I mean, that's shooting, you know, probably 30 to 50 arrows a night, four to five nights a week. You can do this in your garage, like I said, if it's raining outside or whatever, you don't need room to do this. Your body, your muscle memory does not know how far that arrow is traveling after it leaves the bow. So whether you're doing this at five feet or 10 yards, um, honestly, the closer the better when you start. Like I said, you're just centering this dot or whatever you're shooting at in your peep sight and focusing on that release. Once you feel like you're breaking pretty clean shots and you, can, you have a pretty good shot sequence down, then we're gonna take that sight, put it back on the bow, but we're not going to go straight to 20 yards and start shooting it again. Um, if you are, especially a target archer, or even if you're not, if you're a hunter, make up whatever scoring system you want. Uh, on a target, well, this is a single spot, but on a three spot Vegas face, you know, you shoot 10 rounds of three arrows, uh, 30 points around, 10 rounds, 300 is a perfect score. You should be able to shoot a 300 with a 30X at four yards, if you can't, you stay there till you do. Um, then, so again, this is with your sight on. Then you're gonna back up to six yards and do the same thing. Then eight yards, 10 yards, 12 yards. Again, this takes time. This is probably the number one mistake that I see is I give people these drills and they do it for two days and then throw their sight back on and go to the range and shoot 100 yards. It's not gonna work. You gotta put in your dues with this. It will work if you trust the process. Uh, Eventually, you will be able to get to 20 yards and you will be able to settle the pin in the middle. You'll be able to squeeze that trigger and you're gonna use that same shot process every time. As when that pin starts to cover what you're aiming at, squeeze one, squeeze two, squeeze three. You focus on the execution, not on the hold. If you stare at what you hit, your arm is gonna automatically be moving that pin towards what you're looking at. So even if my pin is down here and I'm pushing it this way and the shot breaks when it's right here, because my front arm is pushing in that direction and I'm not commanding the shot and giving up the moment my brain says shoot, my follow through is actually gonna give that arrow direction towards the center. So it's kind of a misconception that your pin has to be dead center to hit dead center. Um, execution over a steady hold any day of the week, in my opinion. If you follow any like competitive archers uh, on YouTube or you watch competition archery media or anything like that, all these, they get questions, the pros get questions all the time, you know, Oh, what the heck? <laughs> How do you hold steady when you're nervous? The answer is they don't, okay? They don't, they hold steadier than most of us, but that pin's gonna move and they just focus on a solid execution. So that, if you're punching the trigger and having trouble getting a pin to settle on the target, that's my method. Now this might take six weeks or eight weeks or more. Uh, so in the off season, you got nothing else better to do. Take the time, do that, you know, do those drills. Uh, another thing you can do to help hold steadier, because as you start to hold steadier, you it makes it easier to just pull that trigger. When that pin is floating around all the time, our brain doesn't want that bow to fire when that pin's not in the middle. And that's probably the hardest mental hurdle to get over is just telling yourself like, okay, the pin's gonna float, I'm just gonna break a clean shot. Focus on the execution of the shot, not the result at first. Sometimes things will get worse before they get better. That's normal. Um, if you are someone that like you can break a clean shot, but you tend to always hold low. Like I know a lot of people where that pin just settles right at the bottom of the dot and they basically just sight in for it, which 20, 50, 20 to 50 yards you can do. But when you get out there 80 and hundred, it's really hard to tell if your pin is actually at the bottom of the dot or if it's down here or right here. My best drill for that is, um, Basically, you're gonna pretend you're not aiming at the target, you're aiming through the target. Pretend you are literally trying to drill a hole through the center of the target with your pin. It's almost like you're using that pin as a blocker 
as opposed to something you're aiming with. So if you tell your brain, okay, I'm gonna block the middle with my pin, I don't wanna see what I'm staring at, I'm gonna block the middle, you'll help, it'll help center you up. Um, if, if you feel like you're breaking a clean shot, but you feel like on the shots that take a little bit longer to break, you start to shake, um, you can do what I call a pseudo round. And I actually know Jim McKee, um, he's a, a senior pro now, but still a phenomenal shooter. He will literally shoot 30 arrows without ever actually firing an arrow. And what he'll do is he'll come back to full draw, he'll settle on the spot, and he will literally hold as long as he can until that the dot or his pin leaves. You know, if you're an experienced shooter, you could say until it leaves the yellow. If you're not so experienced, you could say until it leaves the red. Um, but he's, his goal is to get to where he can hold that pin centered for 15 seconds. And the reason for that is that when you are shooting on your, you know, a normal practice round, usually your shot is going to be breaking within a second of each other every time. Um, so usually in that like three to five second mark, like once the pin settles, it's at one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, tonk. If your body is conditioned to only have to hold steady, if your muscles are conditioned to only be strong for that three to five seconds, in a scenario where you might get nervous, like whether it's a hunting scenario or a competition scenario, when you get to that eight, nine, 10 second, all of a sudden your body starts freaking out and going, whoa, whoa, like I, I've never had to hold this long and that pin starts doing all sorts of crazy things. You start breaking down on the shot and you punch the trigger. So if you can condition yourself to hold 10 to 15 seconds, then when you're actually shooting, that first three to five or six seconds, you're in the strongest part of your hold. You're not at the back end of your hold when the shot breaks, you're right in the middle of your strength. Um, again, it's boring, it's not a fun drill to do, but I promise you, it works. Um, I've done this and it's crazy within three or four days and you don't shoot there, like, I mean, you can shoot it if you want, but I generally just let down because at that point, like your, your shot has broken down to the point, I don't want to ingrain like a bad shot, so I just let down and do the same thing again. I put my thumb on the trigger, I do all that, and I aim and I aim and I aim, but I, I don't actually fire the arrow. Um, it's wild how in three to five days of doing that, how much steadier you will start to hold. Um, so much of aiming is draw length and literally just your strength and your conditioning. Uh, if you only shoot one day a week, you're only gonna hold as steady as somebody that shoots one day a week. You shoot five days a week and you do these drills, you'll get to the point where, you know, you can just park that pin in the 10 ring and it's gonna float a little bit, but it's gonna stay steady more or less. And as you do that, it makes it easier to execute a clean shot. So kind of starting from the beginning here, as we're practicing shot execution, we're shooting more. So we're ingraining good habits in execution. As we shoot more, our hold gets better. Pretty soon we have a solid execution and a steady hold, and that's when your accuracy starts to peak. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to take your time with this. This is not something that is gonna happen overnight. There are no quick fixes in archery. I mean, every once in a while you can be like, oh, you know, let's, let's lengthen your D-loop by a quarter of an inch, and it will help, but it's not, generally speaking, when it's form issues, there's nothing that I'm, I can teach you or tell you to do that's gonna fix your shot like that. It takes time, you just have to accept that. And if you do it, you will reap the rewards later in the year. So if you have target panic issues and, and you want to make them better, I highly suggest this method. Um, I've used it myself. Target panic is a weird thing. It'll just show up at random times. I'm able to recognize it quickly and I do this method. I will literally hold, you know, I don't usually take my sight off the bow anymore, but I'll go to like five yards and I'm like, okay, you have to break 30 perfect shots in a row, shoot a 330X before I back up to 10 yards. And I do that for two weeks, slowly working the target back. And then when I go back to 20 or whatever I'm shooting at, my target panic is cured. Um, so I've used this on myself. I've used it on countless people that I've done lessons with. And in, in my opinion, it, it has worked more often than not. So um, if you have any more questions on this, please feel free to hit that comment section below. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. If you hit that subscribe button, it really, really helps us out. Um, as usual, remember precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.